Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I am so excited about this card. We have an epic pop-up display card. This fits in a five by seven envelope, right? Here it is. It's slightly narrower than five inches. It's four and a quarter. There it is closed on display. And then we have a magnetic closure and it pops open and I love it so much. I adapted this from Trisha Morris at Club Scrap. She did an A2 version. So huge shout out to her for being absolutely awesome and designing a cool style of card. I will link to her and her video below and on the printable. So I'm using the large die of the month that has these flamingos and some tropical leaves. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of ink blending at the bottom. I'm using a piece of scratch paper and I'm just sticking that right in between the wing and the bottom so that the ink is darker on the bottom and then not carrying up so much into the leaves and then a little bit on the neck. You could skip this, right? There's tons of great deboss detail in there. It looks really, really great, super quick and easy. I stuck a little piece of tape right behind the eye. It cuts out when the bird cuts out. And so I just used a marker and colored it black. I wasn't gonna cut it out <laughs> separately. Uh, and then I stuck that back in there with some glue. I know that flamingos mostly have like pinkish legs and then there's some pink on the beak, but I really like the contrast of pink and black and white. I find that combination really striking. So I made my bird this way, but you can make yours however you want. And you guys, this is just a method, right? There's a free printable that will show you exactly how to make this five by seven card and you can decorate it with anything you want. I went all out on this one, right? I went a little nuts, but the printable will give you everything you need to make it and keep it pretty simple, especially if you use pattern paper. I release free sentiments and templates a couple times a month. So if you're interested in that template along with all of the Birds of Paradise sentiments, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified every time there's a new free kit. The printable is pretty fancy, but I'm working with this one, just my prototype. This is an 11 by seven inch card base, and we're gonna score the first three score lines right away. So I have one and seven eighths, three and three quarter, and then four and a quarter, okay? I'm gonna bring my template back. If you have a longer scoreboard, then it's six and a half, seven and a quarter, and nine and an eighth, but I don't have mine out. So I'm just gonna flip it around and do the same three score lines again. One and seven eighths, three and three quarter, four and a quarter. So now we have six score lines and we need to remove two sections that are between score lines two and five, all right? It's three and a half by one and a quarter. And so I'm just gonna bring in a little template. I cut some scratch paper to that size and I'm gonna draw a line connecting score lines two and five by holding that template all the way at the top and all the way at the bottom. You can do this with your scissors if you're comfortable doing that. So I'm gonna use my scissors right up the score lines. It's a pretty short cut. I feel pretty comfortable there. Um, and then I'm gonna bring in my craft knife because in my head at the time, that felt easiest. So this is my ruler that has the thickest edge to it. And I am just gonna run my craft knife a couple of times along that line, okay? And really, I did a pretty good job except at the corners where I didn't quite come up high enough. If you have a sliding blade trimmer, you could do it that way. If you're comfortable with your scissors, you can do it that way. Like there's, there's lots of ways to go about this that are maybe a little less challenging than what I did. So I've removed both of those sections and you can see it's right in the middle in the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna start folding. So the first two score lines, pick a side, doesn't matter. The first two score lines are valley folds and I'm gonna use my bone folder and just really crease those well as we're going along. It's gonna help everything fold better later, okay? So two valley folds. Then as we get to the middle, the next two are mountain folds. So the opposite direction of what we were doing before. If you're really picky, you can pay attention to how you scored these on your scoreboard, but I don't have the energy for that. Then the last two are also valley folds. So it's valley, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, valley. It's on the printable, okay? But what we want is for that center section to kind of pop up. Do you see that? Valley, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, valley. And so we've got this pop up in the middle and we can sort of tuck the other wings behind it. And you get this little panel that is super cool and kind of hides in there, all right? Again, this is not a full five inches wide, it's four and a quarter, but I'm adding a bunch to it, gets a little bulky, so it still fits in the envelope this way. 
to create a focal point, you need something that is narrower than four inches and shorter than six and three quarter. I'm using these essential modern ovals from Spellbinders that are long and skinny. It works beautifully for this. And if you're watching this video kind of right as it comes out, these are half price. Almost everything except the flamingos is half price that I used here, sort of by accident. It's super exciting. I'll leave all the links below and just thank you to those of you who use my links. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so I've layered up my ovals and now I have pieces for my panels. These are one and five eighths by six and three quarters. I have eight of them. I'm only gonna use six, but if you wanted to cover all the panels, that's what you need. And then this piece is one and three quarter by four and a quarter. That'll go in the middle back so I can write my sentiment there when I'm ready. I'm embossing the four inside panels using the peppermint stripe embossing folder from Spellbinders. It's really big, so they fit nicely in there and it's a 2D folder. I wouldn't put a 3D on the inside. It's just gonna get crazy bulky, okay? Then there's this Christmas bird poinsettia and I am just stealing this teeny tiny Santa hat and then the more holiday decorations. Again, all three of those items, half price, totally nuts. I'm gonna layer up two of the lights for you here, just kind of show you how this works, but they're really quick and easy and I just assembly line them. Like I line them all up, get them ready to go. I add dots of glue um, and it goes pretty quickly. I actually have two of these because I use them so much and I wanna be able to create more of these more quickly. For the hat, I actually am using it upside down, the base piece upside down so that the poof ball goes the other way. And I just use my bone folder to flatten any edges that feel like they're rounding the wrong direction, but not a problem at all. I've done this a couple times. There are little strands to put your lights on and I have cut them out of some matte silver cardstock. And I'm just gonna show you some pieces of this because this is the part that took me the longest. Again, if you just use pattern paper or maybe just the 2D embossing folder, this goes really quickly. But I'm adding little dots of glue all over that strand and then I will tap it off on the back of my hand to remove any excess glue. I'm not throwing away any of those little pieces. I went through the trouble to put glue on it, so it is going on the card. I also have my two blue panels stuck to my sticky mat that I usually use to pick up die cuts. You'll see me do that in a little bit, but just to hold them together and keep everything nice and steady. These two panels are gonna be right next to each other. Ultimately, there are four, two on each side, and I want to create like a continuous movement of these lights and strands across them both. So once I have the strands down, I will arrange all my little lights and I'm gonna bring in another sticky mat here to sort of pick things up and add glue and set it back down. I have this tiny little strip and I'm just starting in one corner. I could have done both at the same time, but I have cut up all my pieces of sticky mat and I didn't have one big enough anymore. So once the glue is on there, I lay it right back in the exact same corner. Some people use press and seal for this. Um, I'm just not that coordinated. I need something that is not gonna move quite so much. Uh, this doesn't go as smoothly as I want because my mat is new and really sticky. If I had just given that a minute to dry, 30 seconds maybe, that would help tremendously. And if I had put glue on the back of that pink light, <laughs> as I was doing these four panels, I think there were three or four of them that just didn't get glue on them. That's kind of how it goes some days. I don't know about you. So once I finished the first panel, I did the same on the second panel. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and just clip those strings of lights right in between. And I'll take my bigger scissors to clean up any of those little pieces that are hanging off the edge. You could use your trimmer for that as well. So I am looking to make sure that my strands of lights are lining up. As you can see, I ripped one of these off already. <laughs> I glued it down without really paying attention and I went to add the second one and they didn't line up and I was like, oh my gosh, I went through all that trouble. So I very carefully um, took my craft knife and kind of slid it under the panel. I got super lucky. On this one that I pulled up, there's one little corner where the embossing got a little crushed but I don't think you notice. There's so much going on on this card and I took my bone folder, like my pencil bone folder, and just kind of reinforced the lines that are in the folder uh, and I think it's all right. So I did the same to the other side and now we can work on our focal piece. I know I want this flamingo like right in the center. I'll grab his hat and then I know I want a little something else. So I grabbed a couple of the leaves that are also in the large die of the month and I spent about 45 minutes, you guys. 
it looks so seamless on camera by the time I've edited out all of the thinking that I do. But ultimately, I'm going to add two leaves and that's it. That's it. I liked one green one and one black one. I didn't want the leg to disappear on top of one of those black leaves, um, but two green was too much. I could have used my sticky mat here to make this a little bit easier. Like I couldn't quite remember where I wanted the leaves, but I didn't think about it at the time. Then I will add glue to the back of my flamingo. I am making sure that he is glued down quite well, okay? There are a lot of little pieces on the inside, those lights, and they stick up a bit. So when you open and close the card, anything that's sort of hanging out and not secured can catch on those. So just something to be aware of if you're gonna make one with all the things on the inside. To add my ovals, I'm gonna add glue only to the very center section, right? I kind of penciled it in there. Add it to the base. I don't want extra glue kind of showing on the back of that oval if I went too high or too low. I'm gonna flatten everything to help me get it center. I struggled a little bit sort of top to bottom to see that. So I'm gonna do my best and then I'm gonna flip it over. Sometimes from the back, I can see a little better. Do I have the same amount of oval peeking out above and below? And then because we only glued that center section, it looks like it's sort of floating in the middle of nowhere and the pop-up hides behind it and it folds shut. Uh, so I created some panels for the front and ultimately I didn't like them. So I cut that out and those are just on there with my removable adhesive. I ran this shiny piece of cardstock. It's like a white shimmer cardstock through the 3D embossing folder of the month that has these beautiful, gorgeous leaves. And I'm gonna ink from the bottom. Okay, I'm using Surf Ink and the big fluffy brushes from Spellbinders and it goes very quickly and I can get that very soft blend that sort of disappears towards the top without having to change colors. Those two panels are gonna go on the front of the card and then I have this scallop circle also from Spellbinders and I am gonna mark a little circle where I'm gonna add a magnet for a closure, totally optional. And I'm also going to mark the scallop at the top with a T and the one at the bottom with a B. It's going to help me when I go to put everything back together. I've been using these dies a lot lately for my emergency sentiments. This scallop is two and three eighths of an inch um, and it just fits the sentiments beautifully. I have this little magnet. These are from Total Element. You guys, they are wafer thin. Okay, so I punched a hole in my scallop right where that overlaps the panel on the left of our card. And I am gonna layer this up, okay? I want it too thick, it's 100 pound cardstock, and then I'll punch another hole in there. Those magnets are super strong and about the width of two pieces of cardstock, so it hides in there. Right now, I'm working on the embossed panel that's gonna go on the right. I'm adding an extra piece of cardstock because I need some on the left to hide the magnet and I want it to feel balanced. Sometimes if you add those extra layers only on one side, it feels sort of cattywampus, like you can't put your finger on it, but when you're looking at it, something's not right. So I'm using my wet glue and I am lining that up on my panel centered as best I can. Then I'm gonna fold everything shut and I'm gonna line up my scallop. I marked the top and bottom scallops. I'm putting them right in the middle and I'm using my fingers to remember where it overlaps that right panel and I'm gonna add glue only on that very right hand side and then I can add this onto my card. I'm gonna hold that for a minute and make sure it's really good and stuck on there because we need to be precise in this next step. I have a piece of 120 pound cardstock that I'm gonna add with removable adhesive to that left-hand side because I need to get the placement for my magnet, okay? So I'm gonna add it on there centered, close everything up, and I'm gonna trace through that circle. I added two extra circles in pink, it's very important. If I were to do this again, I would do two magnets instead of just one. I'd put them where the pink circles were and do the same steps. So I'm tracing through that circle and then I can remove this white piece of cardstock and punch through it. And I know the hole is gonna be exactly where it needs to be to line up with my black scallop circle, okay? I'm adding glue onto this and then I'm gonna grab a second piece of heavyweight white cardstock, okay? Because the front panel is embossed, you could probably get away with one, but I was just being really cautious. I'd done so much work at this point, I was like, we're gonna make sure we do it right. I'm double checking to make sure that white cardstock fits behind my embossed panel. And then 
once I'm sure, I'll add glue and I can add this onto the black panel on the front on the left hand side. Okay, so I'm going to fold everything closed and it's kind of catching, you can see. I just know to be a little bit careful with this one. I think it's worth it. I wouldn't do anything differently, but that is what's happening. So heads up there if you add a lot of die cuts on the inside. I've glued that to the panel. I double checked and made sure that my circles lined up. And now I'm going to add another scallop to the inside. This circle serves two purposes. It gives me a place to add an inside sentiment, but it's also the thing that's gonna hold the magnet in there on the back. I wasn't really thinking I needed to do that when I put all of my lights on there, or I might've left that yellow one off. It's really bulky to try to go over those two layers of cardstock from the light, and then we have the scallop. So I just took it off very carefully using my pokey tool and then I'll use wet glue and line this up with the scallop on the front, right? It's gonna cover up that hole. Make sure you wait to do this until you have your magnet placement on the left front panel or you're gonna run into problems. So here's my hole on the left and I'm gonna grab one of these magnets, okay? And you can see, I'm gonna press it in there. It kind of pops into place. I just used a standard hole punch. It is completely flush. You guys, they're so thin. I'm gonna cover that up with a little bit of tape, any tape will work, and then I'll add my embossed panel. If you haven't used magnets before, these are my favorites. They're super strong and they're not very expensive. They're like 17 bucks for 200 and you get free shipping. I mean, it's insane. I've only ever bought them once. <laughs> and if you go back into my like really early videos, everything had a magnet. Everything I made was some kind of like crazy magnet something and I loved it. I might do more of that. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. I folded everything shut and to make sure my magnet will work, right? I just kind of drop it towards that hole to make sure the attractive sides are together. I have made things before where I didn't do that. <laughs> they were repelling each other and I had to pull things apart. That's not fun. So double check, make sure your magnets are going the right way. I like to cover them up with tape just to make them really secure. I don't want those magnets to come out of my card, especially if I'm going to give it to somebody who has small children, right? Um, I keep mine sort of safely tucked away. And anytime I make something, they are fully enclosed, like they're not coming out. All right. So there is my card almost done. We're going to add a sentiment. So I'm adding a two inch blue circle. So that's just a standard emergency sentiment mat. If you're new here, my emergency card kits come with sentiments in three basic sizes so you can mix and match. So I'm gonna use a sentiment that is from the Birds of Paradise kit. I designed this specifically for the May clubs for spellbinders, but you could use this with any tropical birds and some of those fit with any birds. I'm gonna use removable adhesive to add the sentiment on the front. Fla la 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 fabulous. And you can sing that in like a Christmas tune, but I will not burden you. <laughs> <laughs> that, but I had this card in mind when I was designing that sentiment. This is the flower from the large die of the month and it's a beautiful and it comes together super easily. I'm adding some light pink ink. You could skip that. There are five petals and then three of the petals have an extra piece you can add on or leave it off. Uh, there is a shape in the middle that is identical on all of them. So you just kind of move things until that shape lines up. It's like a wonky, organic looking something. And then you know you've put your flower together perfectly. So I'm just adding glue. I like the bottom petals kind of towards the front. And then when I add the top petals, I'm adding them at the back. I feel like the perspective works best that way. I suppose you could add these extra little pieces before you assemble the flower, but I never remember to do that even though I've just inked them up. So I'm just adding glue kind of along the sides where I know that they go. Again, I've made a bunch of these. I've got one sitting there just kind of giving me a reference point. I will keep that in my packaging. I did something with the shading and coloring that I didn't really like, but I'm happy to keep that one hanging around just to make assembling this a little easier in the future. Not that it was hard, but. So the center has two pieces and I've cut them from yellow and I want a little bit of black in the middle. So I'm just gonna use my Sharpie and go over part of that center. It is the same shape as the shape we were lining up when we were adding the petals to each other. Uh, so it's really quick and easy. And that finishes our flower. The flower was important to me because I wanted to cover up some of the leaves and the legs of the flamingo that were just a little busy peeking through there. 
So I'm gonna figure out where I want him and add glue only on one side. I'm adding him on the opposite side of where I glued that scallop circle. This is important. It means that when I open and close my card, I have to be a little bit careful and kind of open both sides at the same time or they catch on each other. But I love that sort of interlocking mechanism. I'm gonna add a second sentiment on the inside. This is from Kit 12. I'll link it below. Uh, and this says, this could have been a glitter bomb. The people in my family open my cards and sort of expect for it to do something ridiculous like pop up or explode. And so <laughs> I think this is super funny. Again, I'm adding it with removable adhesive. And part of why I did that was to make sure that the magnet can go through yet another layer of cardstock. So this is my back piece. It's one and three quarter by four and a quarter. And I'm just gonna add some glue and add that on there. If I had this to do again, I would do it with removable adhesive to make it easier to write on that piece. Like I can take it off, write on it and put it back on. But if I struggle with it, I'll just add another piece of cardstock right over the top. Wouldn't be the first time. So this whole thing folds up. The magnet closure is working just fine. Again, it'd be a little bit stronger if I did two magnets instead of one but I am so, so pleased with this. I just love how fun this card is and how ridiculous it is, <laughs> my little Christmas flamingo. I hope that you will give this a try. If you're interested in that free printable that has all the measurements and instructions, all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel and then ring that bell so you're notified every time there are new free kits. You'll find all the instructions in the description box below the video. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time.